researcher, lecturer, writer, and historian. So it is Friday, March 27th, Friday, March 27th, 2020. We made it through another week. It's been a very, very crazy, trying week uh, fighting coronavirus, and we see the increase in um, cases, and we see that the U.S. has now surpassed China in the number of reported cases of coronavirus. So I wanted to do an update. Uh, I talked about on uh, Thursday, March 26th, I talked about the uh, coronavirus stimulus bill that passed the U.S. Senate. And it passed uh, 96 to zero, overwhelmingly, right? So I did a broadcast Thursday, many of you all saw that, that dealt with what's in the $2.2 trillion coronavirus uh, stimulus package, okay? And we broke it down. Uh, we talked about the $1,200 uh, check that 150 million um, American households will receive. Um, and there were a lot of questions that I got on Facebook and Twitter, uh, well, Facebook and YouTube uh, specifically, dealing with that, okay? So this bill is almost a 900-page bill, all right? Uh, it, passed the House, it passed the U.S. Senate. Uh, the House of Representatives is expected to pass it even though there's a hiccup with Representative Thomas Massey of Kentucky, who was pushing for a, um, a floor vote as opposed to a voice vote, all right? But it's expected to pass the House of Representatives, all right? So I want to deal with uh, answering a lot of questions that uh, you all had dealing with uh, what if you get Social Security, what if you didn't file taxes, et cetera, okay? So we're gonna deal with um, answer your questions, and how do you get uh, the twelve hundred dollars stimulus check? And also deal with the other benefits that are in here, whether you're a small business owner, et cetera, whether you get Social Security, uh, what have you. Okay, so everybody share this broadcast on your social media platforms, and invite your friends to tune in. Also, we're broadcasting on my Facebook fan page, the African History Network, my YouTube channel, Michael M Hotep, I M H O T E P, also on. Uh, Periscope, the AHN show on Periscope, and um, my personal uh, YouTube, uh, my personal Facebook page, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Okay, first I'm going to give a quick update on what's going on with um, coronavirus and the fight against this, okay? Uh, Washington Post has live updates, so does... Um, uh, NBCnews.com, okay? Then also African-American business owners posting name your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network as well. Email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the uh, African History Network, okay? Uh, current promotion, buy one month, get two months free. All right, uh, let's look at uh, some quick updates here. We see that um, this is having an impact on the stock market uh, with uh, Representative Thomas Massey um, calling for a uh, physical floor vote as opposed to a voice vote. Uh, but we, we see that uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has testified positive for the novel coronavirus and is self-isolating with what he described as mild symptoms. But Boris Johnson says he will continue to lead the uh, government's response video conference, video conference, as uh, he said, as we fight the virus. In the United States, we saw that on Thursday, March 26th, the uh, U.S. Uh, became the new epicenter for this global outbreak. It was, it was announced that it was named a global pandemic on March 11th by the World Health Organization. And the U.S. now leads the world in confirmed cases after it surpassed China after it surpassed China's reported total. In um, Washington, we see that the House of Representatives is debating the bill is expected to pass uh, the bill, the $2.2 the $2 trillion, the $2.2 trillion uh, bill is expected to pass the House Back of Representatives. Ahead, it's expected to pass the House of Representatives. Great service. Just a second here. Could you repeat that? This is MSNBC on my phone. Um, so we see that Italy reports 919 coronavirus deaths in one day, the largest single day uh, toll reported to any country. Um, we see the death toll from uh, coronavirus has passed 25,000 globally, according to the tally from John, John Hopkins University. And that's, where, uh, that's what I use, uh, the tally from 
uh, John Hopkins uh, University. Um, they have probably the most accurate um, tally. Okay, and I'm gonna give that to you here in just a second. We'll look at uh, we'll look at the tally from John Hopkins University. One thing that's important to note is that worldwide there have been about 127,000 people, about 127,000 people worldwide that have recovered from uh, COVID-19, okay, from the coronavirus. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 is the actual virus, which is called coronavirus. The disease that SARS-CoV-2 causes is COVID-19, okay? So everybody share this uh, broadcast on your social media pages, and uh, we see that, uh, yeah, I'm also broadcasting on my personal Facebook page, Michael M. Hotep, on um, on Facebook. Okay, so let me share this quickly here. Stand by. All right, I'm going to pull up the. Um, I'm going to pull up the reporting from also. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the numbers from um, John Hopkins University. Let me just refresh the screen here. But a lot of times, the number of people who recover from this worldwide are not discussed. Okay, so I think that's important to note as well. Um, we see that New York, the New York City area, is the current U.S. epicenter, but the number of confirmed cases is beginning to surge elsewhere. Um, and we see hotspots uh, at, at the, uh, the, Surgeon, the Surgeon General, uh, Jerome Adams said on Friday, U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams said on Friday, quote, we also see spots like Detroit, like Chicago, like New Orleans will have a worse week next week, okay? We know that um, Michigan, a couple of days ago, Michigan was number five, uh, nationwide. Uh, we know that Wayne County, which is the county Detroit is in, is one of the top epicenters for this. Wayne County may be number three, I think, right now. Okay, so as more tests become available, we see that you're going to have more people diagnosed with this. But the hospitals, a lot of hospitals here in the metro Detroit area, Beaumont Hospitals, Henry Ford, they're basically at capacity, their ICU beds. They're basically at capacity. Okay. Um, this is why the social distancing is so important. Some governors have been more responsible with social distancing than others. You have governors of Republican states, like state of Mississippi, state of Florida, who have not ordered a stay in. Okay. The Democratic governors have been a lot more responsible. Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York, Governor Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan, uh, Governor uh, J.B. Pritzker of Illinois, Governor Mike DeWine of Ohio. The, the, because of lack of leadership from the federal government, the governors have been forced to take the lead on this. Now, a Washington Post ABC News poll finds that nine in 10 Americans are staying home, quote, as much as possible, end quote, and practicing social distancing um, to lessen the risk of becoming infected. Now, the virus continues its inexorable creep through the world's halls of power. Shortly after uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said he had tested positive, British Health Secretary Matt Hannock said he too test is infected. Other top officials around the world have also contracted the coronavirus, including members of, of uh, US Congress, party leaders in Spain and Italy, and uh, politicians from Iran to Australia, all right? So we see, I just did a screen refresh. So we see worldwide, five, uh, it's over 560,000, it's actually over 566,000 uh, reported cases of COVID-19 uh, around the world. Uh, we see the US is at a little more than 92,000 uh, reported cases where China is at 81,000. Uh, 800, uh, 81,000, a little more than 81,000 reported cases. There have been um, 25,000 deaths worldwide from this. And, but I, I, once again, it's important to note also, and oftentimes this gets left out, there have been uh, a little more than 127,000 reported cases of people who had COVID-19 and fully recovered from it, okay? There, so that, so there have been at least uh, there have been a little more than 127,000 uh, reported cases of people that had COVID-19 and recovered fully from it. So a lot of times when, even when I watch MSNBC, um, a lot of times when I see reporting on this, the number of cases worldwide 
of people who have recovered from this is oftentimes left out. All right. And I know, and I, and I wouldn't say that's necessarily on purpose. I just know there's a lot of information to cover. Uh, and, uh, the, the information, this is a very fluid story. So information is changing quickly. All right. In the U S there have been, um, a little more than, uh, 1300 deaths in the U S and there have been, uh, uh, at least 800 cases of people who have recovered from COVID-19 in the U S. Okay. All right. So I just want to give you that a uh, bit of information as well. So let's, let's jump into this and how's everybody doing? Um, uh, everybody share this broadcast on your, um, social media pages as well. Uh, so let's look at this. This is a follow-up to my Thursday, March 27th broadcast based upon a lot of, uh, questions people were asking me about how do they qualify? What do they do? Et cetera. All right. So the $2.2 trillion spending bill that passed, uh, the U S Senate, um, uh, it, uh, what a lot of people are focusing on is the $1,200 checks uh, for millions of, of Americans, basically about 150 million households. Okay. So that totals, the cost of that is $290 billion. Uh, we see that the bill also included the increase in unemployment insurance benefits and increase in unemployment insurance benefits. Um, that's a, a total cost of $260 billion. Uh, so we'll talk some about that and then aid to large businesses, uh, with new oversight measures that totals $504 billion emergency aid for small businesses, emergency aid for small businesses. So a lot of African-American business owners that I know of are focusing on this. I know some of them whose businesses are shut down, basically shut down completely because it's deemed as non-essential by Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, so emergency aid for small businesses, um, that total cost is $377 billion. Then we see uh, business tax cuts, deferrals, that total cost is $280 billion. Hospitals, expanded healthcare spending, $180 billion. Emergency aid for state and local governments, emergency aid for state and local governments, $175 billion. Each state will receive a minimum $1.5 billion. Experts say Washington, D.C. received a disproportionately small amount of money based on its population because it was grouped for funding with U.S. territories. So U.S. territories, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, those are U.S. territories. They will receive money from this $2.2 trillion spending bill as well. The package also includes $25 billion in infrastructure grants around the country, which is huge, okay? Once again, this bill is almost 900 pages, okay? So as more information comes out, because I do research all throughout the day, as more information comes out about this, I will give you updates on this, okay? Other items in the package include $45 billion for federal emergency management agencies, disaster relief fund, that's FEMA, $45 billion for FEMA, uh, $31 billion to support local schools and colleges, $31 billion to support local schools and colleges. We saw Representative Matt Gates of uh, Florida made a big deal out of Howard University getting, I think it's about $13 million, but Howard has a hospital also, okay? Um, and that's the, if you remember Matt Gates, that's the dumbass who was on the house floor for the, uh, I think the hundred billion dollar bill wearing a gas mask, making fun of it. And then a couple of days after that, uh, a, one of his constituents in his district died of, of COVID-19. Okay. And then he was, a, he came in contact with somebody at the CPAC conference, which is a Republican, was a big Republican conference, right wing, um, conference that Republicans hold each year. He came in contact with somebody who had COVID-19 at the conference. He had to self-quarantine, okay, after making a mockery out of it. All right, so uh, $31 billion to support local schools and colleges, $25 billion for the national transit systems, and $25 billion for, uh, 20 by, and $25 billion for more food stamp funding, uh, dealing with SNAP, okay? So we'll post a link to this article here I talked about this in my Thursday, March 26, uh, 2020 broadcast. What's in the $2.2 trillion coronavirus Senate stimulus package? What's in the $2.2 trillion coronavirus stimulus package? This is from Washington Post. There's also um, uh, NBCnews.com has a good article dealing with the same topic uh, at NBCnews.com as well. All right. Okay. So let's look at um, dealing with um, answering a lot of questions that... Um, 
I receive from people dealing with this, okay? And how's everybody doing on YouTube also? Uh, we're broadcasting on my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. All right, so individuals making up to $75,000 a year will receive um, $1,200, okay, with an additional $500 per child. The payments progressively decrease for individuals making more than $75,000 with an in cap with an income cap of ninety nine thousand dollars. Now Americans should start getting their checks within three weeks," said uh, Treasury uh, Secretary Steve Mnuchin. Okay, he said this on Thursday, March twenty six. Now, by comparison, the IRS took three months to distribute checks in two thousand nine to battle the Great Recession when they had the the stimulus checks then. Okay, now some experts say that due to budget cuts and obsolete technology, the IRS will need months, not weeks, to send out payments. All right, now Howard Gleckman, a senior analyst at the Urban Institute's Tax Policy Center, told Reuters, Reuters.com, quote, I don't think any of the policymakers have given any thought to the practical implications of actually doing this. The IRS does not have the resources to do it, okay? Now, those people who were planning on receiving a paper check have moved since filing their last, those people who were planning on receiving a paper check and have moved since filing their last uh, tax return should submit a change of address form, which normally takes four to six weeks to process. You do that at irs.gov, okay, irs.gov. I'm on uh, irs.gov's website right now. They have a special section dealing with coronavirus, and they have to update it because there's not a lot of information there right now because I'm on their website right now irs.gov. Taxpayers can get their checks a little faster if they sign up for direct deposit with the IRS. In order to register for direct deposit, people should indicate it is it, people should indicate direct deposit as the refund method on their tax form. Okay? To change a bank account or routing number for the deposit, call the IRS customer service line at 1-800-829-1040. 1-800-829-1040. Um, now, the IRS has set up a special coronavirus landing page on its website, which it will update as more information becomes available. Currently, the website says stimulus payment checks, no information available yet, no sign up needed. Instead of calling, please check back for updates. Now, per the uh, almost, the, keep in mind, this is an almost 900 page bill. So, more details are coming out on this. Per the bill, quote, the vast majority of Americans, no action on their part will be required in order to receive a rebate check. This includes many low income individuals who file a tax return in order to take advantage of the refundable earned income tax credit and child tax credit. OK, now for those who have already filed for 2018 and 2019 taxes and whose information is up to date and accurate. There is no need to do anything at all, okay, basically, as we know right now. So if you file for 2018, 2019, you set up the way you wanted to get the payment, direct deposit or by mail. You haven't moved. Everything is accurate. Direct deposit, they have your routing number. You haven't changed banks, anything like that. You don't have to do anything, okay? Uh, I encourage people to go to irs.gov. Keep in mind the deadline to file taxes. Um, has uh, changed to July 15th, 2020, all right? But the, if, if um, you want to get if you want to get the check uh, quickly, be one of the first ones to get the check, you want to make sure the IRS has the accurate information. So let's go through and answer some of your questions. And once again, the website is irs.gov, irs.gov. I'm going to pull it up here. Um, well, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do a, a screen share. Um, We'll see. I don't want the uh, computer to freeze up on me here. But when you go to irs.gov, I'll post a link right here for you. On the homepage, they have um, uh, one part portion that says coronavirus tax relief. And right next to that, it says stimulus. Uh, it says stimulus checks. OK, they have some information there. It's not a whole lot right now. OK. Um, a lot of times you're going to see that the federal government is making promises uh, and they haven't really thought all this stuff through yet. 
Okay, I'm just telling you, just be prepared for that. Okay, they haven't really thought all the nuts and bolts out. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can pull this up here quickly for you. All right, well, I'll just post a link here. All right, so let's look at um, getting the answer to your question. So a lot of people ask, how much will I get? If you made less than $75,000 in 2019, uh, you would be eligible for the full payment of $1,200. Now, it's going to be a one-time payment of $1,200. Early on, Democrats were pushing for uh, at one point four install four payments of $1,200 each maximum, okay? This bill that passed the U.S. Senate by voting 96 to 0 is much better than the original bill that the Republicans in, in Moscow, Mitch McConnell, were pushing for. It's much better than that, but it's going to be... Um, is, is going to be a one-time payment right now of $1,200, okay? Now, Nancy Pelosi has said that uh, there will probably be a, this, there's a good possibility there will be another stimulus bill. This is phase three of the uh, coronavirus bills. This is the third bill. First bill is for $8.3 billion. Second bill for $100 billion. This is the third bill, all right? So if you made less than $75,000 in 2019, you will be eligible for the full payment of, uh, of $1,200. Now, couples who filed jointly and made less than $150,000 will get uh, $2,400, okay? Couples who filed jointly and made less than $150,000 will get $2,400. An individual who filed as head of household, an individual who filed as head of household and earned $1,200, dollars $1, a hundred thousand, twelve hundred, uh, or less gets one thousand two hundred dollars. Okay, a head of household uh, who earned a hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars. I should say a hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars or less gets twelve hundred dollars. Okay, so a head of household who has earned a hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars or less gets twelve hundred dollars. Now. For every child in the household, you will receive an additional $500. For every child in the household, you will receive an additional $500. If you make more than $75,000, because a lot of people ask this question, if you make more than $75,000 a year, your payment will be reduced by $5 for every $100 of income that exceeds the limits. Okay, if you made $80,000, $90,000, $100,000. If you made more than $75,000 a year, as reported on your taxes, your payment will be reduced by $5 for every $100 of income that exceeds the limits. So if you made, for instance, $80,000 in 2019, as reported on your taxes, you will receive $950 instead of $1,200. The payment decreases to zero for an individual making $99,000 or more, or a couple making $198,000 or more, all right? If you are a family of four, for example, you'll be eligible for a maximum of $3,400. This is a one-time payment. If you are a family of four, you'll be eligible for a maximum $3,400. So a lot of people are asking, when is the money coming? Okay, so like I said, uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said on Wednesday and on Thursday that um, he said that he said the checks will be sent out within three weeks to people whom the IRS has information. He said you don't need to sign up or fill out a form to receive a payment if you've been working and paying taxes since 2018. OK. And as I said, you want to update your information if you've moved, uh, if you if you've moved since 2018, 2019, when you filed, you have a different address on file now. Oh, you have a different address now. If you change bank accounts and you want direct deposit, you want to update that information. Um, and at IRS.gov, they should have the information there to, uh, so, so you can update. OK. How's everybody doing on uh, YouTube? Uh, we got Alex uh, Max. 
uh, just a few people watching this on our YouTube channel. Follow, uh, you can watch us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. All right. Then African American business owners also post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We'll let you know how you can advertise with us. Also, if you like this type of information and you want to support the African History Network, you can donate dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, or PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. That helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air broadcast, finance our Sunday night show, et cetera. All right. And then at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, click on the yellow donate button. Okay, let's continue here. Um, Okay, so will there be multiple payments? This is a, a question I got yesterday a lot. No, this is gonna be a one-time payment, as I, as I stated. The legislation only authorizes a one-time payment, but uh, House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi su suggested on CNN on uh, either Thursday or I think Thursday it was, that Congress could revisit this issue. Uh, she said, quote, we think we'll get more direct payments in another bill, end quote. So it's, it's expected that there will be another bill after this one. Um, when uh, Senator, uh, one of the Democratic senators um, said today that this bill will basically get us through like the next three to six months, so to speak, but there will probably have to be another bill after that. Uh, so something like th the next three to six months, uh, 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 you know, et cetera. Okay, where do I sign up? A lot of people asked. Do I have to do anything? You don't have to sign up. There's no sign up. The payments will be automatic for people who have filed a tax return or have received Social Security benefits recently. The, IR the IRS asked people not to call with questions in general. Okay, not to call with questions. How do I get the money? How do I get the check? Show me the money, et cetera. But to keep checking their website, irs.gov, where they will post updates about the program once uh, they are available. And we posted the uh, link here uh, directly. It, it, um, it's irs.gov and it's uh, forward slash coronavirus, irs.gov forward slash coronavirus. I'm on the website right now. And it um, it says stimulus payment checks, no information available yet, no sign up needed. Tax deadline has been extended July 15, 2020. Um, they just get some general information here. They have information about uh, press releases, uh, statements, etc. So they just have general. They just have general information there. Okay. Let me. Uh, I thought I turned the volume down on the phone, sorry about that. All right, so let's continue. All right. So how will the money be sent? How will the money be sent? So if you have received a tax refund in the last two years by direct deposit, that's where the money will go. That's where the money was sent. Whatever account that the IRS has on record for you, bank account, that's where the money's going. If you have not received a tax refund in the last two years by direct deposit, the IRS can mail a check to, to your last known address, whatever address they have on file for you. They can mail a check there. And it has 15 days to notify you of the method and amount of the payment, okay? The IRS has 15 days to notify you of the method and amount of the payment. They will send a phone number and appropriate point of contact so you can tell them if you did not receive it. Now, if you have moved recently, it may be a good idea to notify the IRS as soon as possible, as I, as I was saying. The IRS also suggests that if you have not yet filed a tax return for 2018 or 2019, do it as soon as you can so that the government has your up-to-date information on file. Go to irs.gov. Um, one of the articles I was reading was saying, and this also applies to people who may get uh, may not make enough money 
to uh, where, where in the past, like if they didn't make enough money and, and for some reason they didn't file, you still want to file so you can uh, qualify, um, so you can still get the, uh, get the check, okay? I'll come to that in just a minute. So how does the government calculate how much I earned? How, how does the government calculate how much I've earned? Have you filed your taxes for 2019 already? If so, the checks will automatically be based on your 2019 tax return, okay? So how much you get in the check, as I went through, maximum $1,200 per person, maximum $2,400 for uh, a couple, and then you get an additional $500 for each child, okay? But once again, if um, uh, the payment is see. If you made $75,000 or less, your payment, uh, your, your, your maximum payment will be uh, $1,200 for, for you. And then if you have additional children, if you have children, you get additional $500. Couples who filed jointly and made less than $150,000 will get $2,400. An individual who filed as head of household and earned $112,500 or less gets $1,200. Okay. So... Have you filed your taxes for 2019 already? If you filed your taxes for 2019, the checks will automatically be based on your 2019 tax return. Look for your adjusted gross income, which is line seven of your 1040 tax form. Uh, 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 line seven on your, 10, uh, on your form 1040 tax return in 2018 or line 8B on your 2019 tax, uh, tax return, okay? So you want to look at those of uh, the 2018 tax return, the 1040 form, look at line seven. And on the 2019 uh, tax return, look at line 8B. Okay. And that, that's for your adjust, uh, adjusted gross income. Now, if you have not filed your 2019 taxes, it'll be based on your 2018 tax return. If you have not filed your 2018 to 2019 tax return, you want to file it now. Uh, go to irs.gov and uh, you can file it now. And as one of the uh, articles I was reading stated that um, you don't even have to go to, for a lot of people, they won't even have to go to H&R Block or something like that to file a tax return. They can, um, they can do it uh, online. If you and also as I stated, if you live in one of the U.S. territories, we have pop people that watch us in the U.S. Virgin Islands, in Puerto Rico. Those are all U.S. territories. They're U.S. citizens. They qualify for the uh, twelve hundred dollar payment as well as, as long as they meet the uh, income, uh, as long as they don't exceed the various income requirements. All right. So let's continue here. And I'll post the links when we're done. I'll post the links to all this information so you can check it out as well. Um, if you receive social security, I got this question yesterday. If you receive social security, but don't make enough to file a tax return, will you still get a check? The answer is yes. Even if you did not file a tax return for 2018 or 2019 or pay taxes in those years, you will be eligible if you received a form SSA 1099 for the year 2019, form SSA 1099 for the year 2019. That's a form that the Social Security Administration sends every year to people who receive Social Security benefits, including retirement and disability. Because I got, I got uh, on YouTube, I got the question uh, from somebody, and they asked about, uh, they, they said they receive uh, disability, and uh, will they qualify? Okay. So they, uh, so they asked that question as well. All right. Shout out to everybody watching us on, on our YouTube channel, uh, Michael M. Hotep on uh, YouTube. Okay, let's continue here. All right, let's continue. Okay, disability, okay? If, you're, if, if you are a disabled vet, but don't pay taxes, do you still qualify? The answer is yes. Although some of the details still need to be worked out, 
the IRS is expected to set up a system so that disabled veterans don't uh, fall through the cracks, okay? Um, and once again, this is an almost 900 page bill. As more details come out, I will update you on this. Um, but yes, if you're a disabled vet who does not pay taxes, you'll still qualify as well. What about if you are, if you are a college student? Do you get a check if you are a college student? That depends. Now, if your parents claim you as a dependent on their taxes, then you are ineligible if your parents claim you as a dependent on their taxes. But if you've been working and filing taxes independently in recent years, you may still qualify. So what about people who made too much money to qualify in 2019, but now they are laid off? Okay. Some people asked a question. I got one of these questions yesterday. Uh, maybe they made, maybe they were individual and they made more than $75,000 in 2019, but now they're laid off. Okay. Are they, are, are they out of luck? Not necessarily, but we'll, we'll have to wait to see with that as more details come out. Okay. But you, you may not be out of luck on that. If you made too much to qualify. So maybe you made more than $75,000 uh, as an individual. Uh, if you made too much to qualify in your last, last tax filing, you probably won't be eligible for the cash benefit immediately, but you can apply for it when you file your 2020 tax return. Uh, if your income drops below a $99,000 threshold for individuals, uh, which doubles for couples this year, okay? So to get the, to get the $1,200, uh, it's um, make under $75,000 a year. OK, if you uh, make uh, ninety nine, if you make under ninety nine thousand dollars a year, you'll get something, but it won't be the maximum. OK. Um, all right. So the IRS is expected to create a system to ensure help for people who fall into this category. They made too much in 2019 to qualify okay but now they're laid off okay what about them what type of stimulus check do they get how much do they get so the irs is expected to create a system to ensure help for people who fall into this category all right now i'm just telling you right now don't expect a check in three weeks if you get it in three weeks that's good um federal government uh, especially under this one uh it don't move that quickly and a lot of times you will have Steve Mnuchin or what have you making promises. I mean, look how long it, it took for, there, there's still a shortage of tests to get to the hospitals from the federal government. There's still a shortage of tests. Now there are more tests available today than two weeks ago. All right. But I'm just, I'm just saying that, that three weeks, uh, that's very aggressive. Okay. So what if you're not an American citizen, but do you qualify? You're here legally, but you're not an American citizen. Do you still qualify? Yes, you do. As long as you're living and working in the U.S. with a valid Social Security number, that includes green card holders, and it generally includes those who work on visas, such as an H-1B visa and an H-2A visa, okay? But it generally excludes visitors, people just visiting here, and people who are in the U.S. illegally, okay, undocumented immigrants. So some people may ask the question, well, if they're not U.S. citizens, um, why should they get taxpayer dollars? Because people who are green card holders and, and work and those who are H-1B and H-2A uh, uh, visa holders, they, uh, those people uh, are working, usually unless they unemployed, but they pay taxes also. So a lot of people don't focus on that. Those people pay taxes as well, even though they're not U.S. citizens. They're here legally. We're not talking about undocumented immigrants, okay? Like white undocumented immigrants. We ain't talking about them because a lot of people don't want to talk about illegal white undocumented immigrants. They just want to focus on uh, non-white ones, okay? We're talking about people who are not U.S. citizens but are here legally. Okay, are the cash payments taxable? This is a question yesterday. Are the tax payments, are the cash payments taxable? 
No, they are not, okay? Know that the cash payments are not taxable. And as more details come out, you know, we'll get more information, but no, they're not taxable. If you live in Puerto Rico or another U.S. territory, okay, do you still qualify? Is that a problem? Yes, you qualify. No, it's not a problem. There's a special provision ensuring that people living in U.S. territories, even ones that have a different tax system, are still eligible, okay, because they're U.S. citizens as well. Now, Donald Trump didn't know about that before uh, the hurricane hit uh, Puerto Rico. Remember, he said he talked to the president of Puerto Rico. Well, that's you, fool. You, you remember that? He said he talked to the president of Puerto Rico. That, that's you. What if you owe back taxes? This is a, a question I got yesterday. What if you owe back taxes? Will the IRS take your stimulus check? The bill does not exclude you from getting a payment if you owe uh, back taxes, if you have past due taxes. Okay, that said, the IRS has yet to set up the new system. Okay, so as it stands now, even if you owe back taxes, you still qualify for this. Now, more details are coming out. The IRS, th th this is, so a lot of this is um, promises that are made, but, but they're, uh, let's back up. The Trump administration is making up a lot of this stuff as they go along, okay? That's just the Trump administration uh, in general. Dealing with coronavirus, they're making a lot of this stuff up as they go along, okay? Now, I'm not, I'm not speaking specifically of this almost 900-page bill. I'm just talking about the whole way they're handling this, the promises they made in the past. They're making a lot of this stuff up as they go along because they were totally unprepared for this. This is what happens when you uh, dismantle the National Security Council Global Pandemic Team. In, 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 in May 2018, uh, uh, National Security Advisor John Bolton fired, fired Rear uh, or Timothy Zimmer, who ha headed up the National Security Council Global Pandemic Team and disbanded the team. And then you fired Homeland Security Director Tom Bossett. This was in May of 2018. If you see my broadcast, I went through and broke all this stuff down. Okay. So, so the U.S. government under the Trump administration was caught with their pants down and they just totally mishandled this. All right. Uh, so a lot of these, a lot of these promises, they'll start getting payments in three weeks and wait, okay, we'll see. They're coming, but we'll, 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 we'll see. Okay. So check this out from, um, NBCnews.com, NBCnews.com, uh, coronavirus checks, direct deposits are coming. Here's everything you need to know. Coronavirus checks, direct deposit, direct deposits are coming. Here's everything you need to know. Okay, so check that out. Then we have um, another really good article that I read, uh, Coronavirus Unemployment Benefits. Who qualifies for unemployment benefits? Okay, so we, when we look at the bill, because th so this is separate from the $1,200 check, okay? But unemployment benefits, who qualifies for that? So once again, when we look at the bill, we see that for the $1,200 checks for Americans, um, we see that there's $290 billion in the bill for the $1,200 checks uh, to Americans. When we look at unemployment insurance benefits coming from this $2.2 trillion bill, we see that um, there's $260 billion allocated for that, okay? So how do you, uh, how, how, does this, how does unemployment deal with this? Okay, so how does unemployment, uh, unemployment insurance, how does that work? So the $2 trillion bill, which passed the U.S. Senate early Wednesday morning uh, or early Thursday morning, March 26, um, this is the third coronavirus bill, okay? The unemployment benefits are worth an estimated $260 billion. So we're looking at... Uh, um, 
an extra $600 per week over the next four weeks for those who are out of work and getting jobless benefits in their state. This is in addition to the jobless benefits that uh, you get in your state, okay? This is in addition to that. So I lost my job, what kind of help can I get? I lost my job, what kind of help can I get? Uh, once you're on unemployment insurance in your state, you will be eligible for an extra $600 per week in emergency federal compensation through July 30th, 2020. Okay, an extra uh, $600 per week in emergency federal compensation through July 2020. All right, now that is in addition to what you'll receive in state benefits. Okay, now that's part of this uh, stimulus package bill. Okay, so in addition to whatever you're getting uh, from your state um, from your state benefits, you'll get an extra six hundred dollars as well as part of the stimulus package bill. Now, do I get that six hundred dollars if I if I'm already getting if I was already getting unemployment before the outbreak? Okay, the answer is yes. If you all, if you are already on unemployment, getting unemployment insurance right now, do you still get the additional six hundred dollars per week? Okay, for uh, basically uh, up to four months. The answer is yes. Now, what if you work part time or had your hours cut? Because we know a lot of people have had their hours cut. Um, if if your business, if the business that you work for is still up and operational, but has reduced hours. I know restaurant owners, things like that, who have um, had reduced, uh, had to cut back on hours here, here in the state of Michigan. Now, some states, because of their governor, have not had a sh shelter in or a lockdown or a lockout or whatever you want to call it. But I know here in the state of Michigan, um, restaurants are looked at as essential businesses so they're allowed to stay open but they can only do takeout only okay i think i think some restaurants are still catering i think they may still be allowed to cater now i don't know what type of events you're having that uh, that require catering but they're doing takeout only okay so you can't sit in the restaurant and eat food therefore a lot of restaurants have had to cut back on the um number of staff and the number of hours their staff are working. All right. Cause they have less money coming in and you're not, they don't have to wait on people. So they're cutting back on staff. So if you, so if you, uh, if you already receive unemployment insurance right now, do you get the extra $600 a week? Yes, you do. What about people who work from home? What about people who work from home? Um, can you still get any benefits? Okay, now for people who work from home as of yet, as of right now, based upon our understanding of this, uh, you don't qualify for that. People who are employed and working from home are not eligible for unemployment insurance. Okay, if you, if you, if, if you have a home business, and if you work from home, you don't qualify for the unemployment insurance. I'm not talking about the $1,200 stimulus check. We're talking about the unemployment insurance because you still work. You still work from home. You're not unemployed. Now, what about people who work part-time and had their hours cut? Do you, do you, if you work part-time, had hours cut, do you still qualify for the $600, uh, the extra $600, okay, uh, that's coming from the stimulus bill? It depends upon your state. Some, benef some, um, some states provi provide benefits to part-time workers, but others don't, okay? So it depends upon um, your state. It's a similar situation for those uh, whose hours are cut. Uh, the bill provides funding for states that want to provide benefits when companies slashed workers' hours without laying them off, okay? 
uh, but not every state provides those benefits. And it appears the federal government is deferring to the states on this issue. All right. So on some of these issues, we need more clarification. And once again, like I said, this is a, a largely 900 page bill. Most of the senators have not read the entire bill, especially people in the House. Most of them have not read the entire bill. Different senators worked on different sections of the bill. Most of them haven't even read the entire bill. All right. But um, but just a second here. Somebody's asking me a question on my tweet. Okay. And let me uh, pull up this article here. This is a, another good one here from uh, NBC News. So I looked at a lot of information on this. I've been on the IRS website also. Okay. Once again, for those that work part time, the federal government is deferring to their to the uh, your respective state um, to deal with how to handle this okay not every state provides uh, these benefits it, it, uh, what if I work part-time or had my hours cut what if I worked part-time or I had my hours cut it depends upon your state some states provide benefits to part-time workers other states do not provide benefits to part-time workers now, what if you just found a job when the coronavirus hit, but you had not started work yet? Will you be eligible? So say you got hired. So you got hired two weeks ago and your start date is maybe is supposed to be this coming Monday. Okay. What if you got hired by a job when the coronavirus hit, but you haven't started work yet? And then now they had, that business has to shut down or what have you, okay? Will you be eligible for the $600 per week of unemployment insurance that's stipulated in this bill? The answer is yes. If you were scheduled to start a job but lost a job or are unable to get to it as a result of coronavirus, you'll still be eligible. Now, what about the people who are self-employed? Okay. You may, you, you may have a brick and mortar store. You're self-employed. You own your own business. I'm self-employed and did not previously qualify for unemployment. Okay. Are you eligible for this unemployment, this $600 per week that's stipulated in this $2 trillion bill? The answer is yes. The bill creates a new program called Pandemic Unemployment Insurance. Um, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. The bill creates a new program called Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. And that extends benefits to gig workers, contractors, and others who would otherwise, who, who would not otherwise qualify for unemployment compensation, but cannot work due to the coronavirus emergency you'll get the $600 per week plus half the average unemployment benefits in your state. You'll get the $600 per week plus half the average unemployment benefits in your state. Okay. And this was something that, um, uh, uh, Democrat, uh, uh, us, uh, Democrat, uh, Democrats in the U S Senate really fought for. And this was something that, Democrats in the House of Representatives were pushing for as well, okay? There are about 5.8, 5.9 million gig workers, Uber, Lyft, Grubhub, Uber Eats. You saw the interview I did with uh, David Cabello, uh, who in February 2019 founded Black and & Mobile, uh, and Black & Mobile is a food delivery service. I just interviewed him, go check that video out. It's an African-American-owned business. Um, and they, they, they're in Philadelphia, they've expanded into Detroit, they're gonna be in Atlanta soon and uh, one, other, one other city, okay? Normally, people who are 
contractors, gig workers, a lot of times they would not qualify for unemployment insurance. Because of this $2.2 trillion bill, they will qualify, okay? So if you're, self, if you're self-employed and did not previously qualify for unemployment insurance, you will be eligible, okay? This bill creates a new program called Pandemic Unemployment Assistance that extends benefits to gig workers, to almost 6 million gig workers, contractors, and others who would not otherwise qualify for unemployment compensation but cannot work due to the coronavirus emergency, okay? You'll get, you'll get the $600 a week plus half the average unemployment benefit in your state. Now, what if $600 is more than you made before losing your job, okay? Will they cut your benefits? What if $600 a week is more than you made before losing your job? Okay, the answer is no. If you qualify for unemployment insurance in your respective state, okay, um, the $600 per week applies regardless of what your salary was. Now, there was a last minute, um, there, 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 there was a last minute uh, disagreement where a few uh, senators who were Republicans tried to reduce the benefits for those who were earning less, but that effort failed. Senator Tim Scott, Republican from South Carolina, the only black Republican in the Senate, Senator Lindsey Graham, okay, some other senators, Senator uh, Ben Sass of uh, Nebraska, Republican, uh, they, some of them were trying to um, change the language in the bill because they were making the argument well, they didn't want people to make more money on unemployment insurance than they would make actually working, which is dumb. You're talking about $600 a week. You're talking about try- people trying to put food on the table, trying to keep the lights on, trying to pay rent, et cetera, okay? Try- and, and, and put gas in their car. Again, you're talking about $600 a week. All right, so if $600 a week is more than you made before losing your job, if it's more than you made before losing your job, um, will they will they cut your unemployment benefits? Okay, the answer is no. If you qualify for unemployment, the six hundred dollars a week applies regardless of what your salary was. Now, are unemployment benefits taxable income? Are unemployment benefits taxable income? The answer is yes. Unemployment benefits are taxable income. Now, what if you're sick? What if, uh, what if you are sick or caring for a sick family member? Okay, will this, um, the unemployment insurance that's in this bill, the, the unemployment payments, the $600 a week, will this help you? Okay, you should be eligible for assistance once you certify that you're that that you're ordinarily able and willing to work, but can't because of the virus emergency. And let me try to pull this up here. You should be eligible for assistance once you, once you certify that you're ordinarily able and willing to work but can't because of the virus emergency. Maybe you have to take care of a sick family member, okay? Um, maybe um, the businesses in your area are shut down, you can't, you can't find a job. That includes if you tested positive or exhibit symptoms of COVID-19, or if you're caring for a member of your household or family who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. You should also be covered if you're out of work due to an, in a, an inability to reach the office due to a quarantine imposed as a direct result of the coronavirus crisis. All right, so this is, I mean, this is really hitting, um, I mean, this is hitting people all across uh, the country and 
we saw that on Thursday, uh, March 26, we saw that 3.3 uh, million people basically filed for unemployment insurance the previous week. And it's going to get a lot worse also. It's going, it's going to get a lot worse. Okay, now, what happens when my state unemployment benefits run out? Okay, I got this question also. What happens when my state unemployment benefits run out? Now, in most states, people who lose uh, their job can typically get up to 26 weeks of unemployment, and then it stops, even if you have not found a new job. All right, and let me pull this up here. Let me try to pull this article up here. Okay, so what happens when your state unemployment benefits run out? Most states people who lose their job can typically get up to 26 weeks of unemployment. Then it stops. Even if you have not found a job. Okay. Um, this bill will provide another 13 weeks. Once it runs out, this bill will provide another 13 weeks. Once your unemployment benefits run out after those 39 weeks, if an, ex if an, extended benefits program is triggered that can provide an additional 13 to 20 weeks of compensation and i'll give you the links to all this information as well because a lot of people are trying to figure out how to navigate throughout this catastrophe that uh uh could have could have been avoided this could have largely been avoided there were warning signs in january february if you've been watching my broadcast i talked about this there were warning signs in january february and the Trump administration, specifically Donald Trump, ignored the warning signs. Okay, so um, and and once again, you can um, I can provide the evidence on this. You don't, you don't have to you know proper documentation ends all conversation. So you don't have to believe me. Let's look at. Uh, There's an article from Washington Post and New York Times. Before virus outbreak, a cascade of warnings went unchecked, un unheeded. Before virus outbreak, a cascade of warnings went unheeded. March 19, 2020, New York Times. Government exercises, including one in 2019, made clear that the U.S. was not ready for a pandemic like the coronavirus, but little was done. All right. Then uh, we look at uh, thehill.com from, I think it was March 17th. 2020, Obama officials walked Trump aides through global pandemic exercise in 2017. Obama officials walked Trump aides through global pandemic exercise in 2017. This is an example of how elections have consequences, people. This is what I was warning people about in 2016 about Trump. People didn't want to listen. They thought just investing in the stock market and, and um, uh, doing economic empowerment is all we needed. No, I said we need to do that and we need to vote strategically because I talked about the threat that Trump was. We have to understand how elections have consequences. This is what I talk about when I deal with six principles of political self-defense and understanding how laws and policies impact the economic conditions of African-Americans. The Obama administration walked incoming Trump administration officials through a hypothetical scenario in which a pandemic worse than the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, which shut down cities like Seoul, Korea, and London, England, they, walked, they, they did this uh, hypothetical scenario in 2019, walking the incoming Trump administration through this. During that briefing, Trump administration officials were told such a pandemic would likely lead to circumstances such as shortages of ventilators and that a coordinated national response would be paramount, according to documents obtained by Politico.com. Documents of the Trump administration officials present during the meeting about 66% no longer serve in the White House. Then we look at the reporting from Washington Post, March 20th, 2020. U.S. intelligence reports 
from January and February of 2020 warned about a likely pandemic. U.S. intelligence reports from January and February warned about a likely pandemic. The intelligence reports did not predict when the virus might land on U.S. shores or recommend particular steps that public health officials should take issues outside the purview of the intelligence agencies. But they did track the spread of the virus in China and later in other countries and warned that Chinese officials appear to be minimizing the severity of the outbreak. Taken together, the reports and warnings painted an early picture of a virus that showed the characteristics of a globe encircling pandemic that could require governments to take swift actions to require governments to take swift actions to contain it. But despite that constant flow of reporting, Donald Trump continued publicly and privately to play down the threat the coronavirus posed to Americans. Despite all this evidence, despite all this intelligence coming, this is what happens when you have a lack of intelligence. Donald Trump continued publicly and privately to play down the threat the virus posed to Americans. Lawmakers also did not grapple with the virus in earnest until the month of March, as officials scrambled to keep citizens in their homes and hospitals braced for a surge in patients suffering from COVID-19, the disease caused by the coronavirus, which is SARS-CoV-2. Intelligence agencies, quote, have been warning on this since January, end quote, said a U.S. official who had access to intelligence reporting that was disseminated to members of Congress and their staffs, as well as to officials in the Trump administration, and who, along with others, spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe sensitive information. We go back and we look at, that's Washington Post, March 20th, 2020. Read the entire article. The article is about five pages. This is just the first page. U.S. intelligence reports from January and February warn about likely pandemic. There were warning signs all along the way. There were hypothetical scenarios that the Obama administration walked the incoming Trump administration through. Then we go back to May 2018. Like I talked about before, you, you see my broadcast. I've, I've dealt with this, laid out this information, laid out the evidence. Okay? If this is your first time watching my broadcast, subscribe to my uh, Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Uh, follow me on Twitter, the AHN show on Twitter, Instagram, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P on Instagram. May 2018, May 10th, 2018, Washington Post had an article. Top White House official in charge of pandemic response exits, exits abruptly. Top White House official in charge of pandemic response exits abruptly. Now, this is what the African-American female journalist Yamiche Alcindor of um, National Public Radio, uh, uh, um, uh, PBS NewsHour, this is what she was asking Donald Trump at the cor coronavirus press conference Friday, March 13th, 2020 in the Rose Garden. And he had a very nasty response to her. He said it was a nasty question. He had a very nasty response to her. When she asked about him uh, firing the head of the global pandemic team, National Security Council global pandemic team, things like this, this is what she was talking about. The top White House official responsible for leading the U.S. response in the event of a deadly pandemic has left the administration and the global health security team he oversaw has been disbanded under a reorganization by National Security Advisor John Bolton. This article is from May 10th, 2018. The abrupt departure of Rear Admiral, Rear Admiral Timothy Zimmer, Z-I-E-M-E-R, from the National Security Council means no senior administration official is now focused solely on global health security. No senior administration official is now focused solely on global health security. Timothy Zimmer's departure, along with the breakup of his team, comes at a time when many experts say the country is already underprepared 
for the increasing risk of a pandemic or a bioterrorism attack. This was May 10th, 2018, this article came out. The U.S. was underprepared then for a pandemic. Pandemic preparedness and global health security are issues that require government-wide responses, experts say, as well as leadership of a high-ranking official within the White House who was assigned only to this role. But when you have somebody incompetent like Trump as president who has declared war on the scientists and the professionals for three years, this is what you get. Example of how elections have consequences. This is why the governors are forced to take the lead on this because of uh, a lack of, because of malfeasance coming from the federal government. Okay. Then lastly, I'll give you this last article because I have a information on this. Okay. Lastly, we look at the article from um, January 31st, uh, January 31st, 2020 from uh, foreignpolicy.com. And let me pull this up here. We look at the article from foreignpolicy.com. And they've talked about this on numerous shows on MSNBC. Um, Trump has sabotaged America's coronavirus response. Trump has sabotaged America's coronavirus response. This is from January 31st, 2020. This is talking about what happened in May 2018 that the article from the Washington Post from May 2018 reported on is showing the connection between is showing the connection between what's happening now as of January 31st, 2020, and what happened May 2018. As it improvises its way through a public health crisis, the United States has never been less prepared for a pandemic. This is the reporting from January 31st, 2020. We see that what they reported at the end of January is coming true. In May 2018, Trump ordered National Security Council, National Security Council's entire global health security unit shut down, calling for reassignment of Rear Admiral Timothy Zimmer and, dis and, and dissolution of his team inside the agency. The month before, which would have been April 2018, then White House National Security Advisor John Bolton pressured Timothy Zimmer's Department of Homeland Security, Tom Bosser, to resign along with his team. Neither the National Security Council nor the Department of Homeland Security's epidemic teams have been replaced. The epidemic team in, home, in the Department of Homeland Security has not been replaced. The Global pandemic team for the National Security Council has not been replaced. Why did Trump order the disbanding of these? Why did Trump order uh, uh, John Bolton to fire Rear Admiral Timothy Zimmer and fire Tom Bossett? Then when Yamiche Alcindor confronted Trump about this, he had like he, he didn't know anything about it. That was Friday, March 13th, 2020. Okay? This sister helped expose a lot of this when she asked that question because it caused a lot of people to focus on that and there were articles written about it going back to May, 20, May 2018. Neither the National Council nor Department of Homeland Security epidemic teams have been replaced. The Global Health Section of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, was so drastically cut in 2018 that much of its staff was laid off and the number of countries it was working in was reduced from 49 countries to merely 10 countries because they're working in these countries to study various viruses and things like this and to get a, and get ahead of pandemics so the U.S. can properly prepare for them and minimize the effect. Meanwhile, throughout 2018, the U.S. agency for international, international Development and its director, Mark Green, came repeatedly under fire from both the White House and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And though Congress has so far managed to block Trump administration plans to cut the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps by 
the disease-fighting cadres have steadily eroded as retiring officers go unreplaced. So people, you, so people sit back asking questions. Well, why, why is Trump allowing the U.S. to be so vulnerable to a pandemic? Why is Trump cutting the funding for scientists, cutting the funding for the Senate and disease control, disbanding this? I haven't even talked about in October 2019 when the pandemic uh, project called Predict was disbanded, was ended. That, that, that was U.S. and President Barack Obama. Vox.com has an article on, on that. I haven't even talked about that yet. So people are sitting back asking the question, well, wait a second, there were these red flags all along the way. There were warnings all along the way. Why is Trump ignoring this? This is an example of how elections have consequences and what happens when you have somebody incompetent in office who declares war on scientists who thinks climate change is a hoax. Okay? This is, this is, what, this is what happens. All right, so let's continue here. So I'll, I'll post the links to those articles. Um, so let's go back to coronavirus and unemployment of, uh, benefits and the $2.2 trillion uh, spending bill. What happens when my state unemployment benefits run out? So we talked that. Now, how long do I have to be out of work to start getting benefits? How long, do, how long do I have to be out of work to start getting benefits? Now, some states require that you're out of work uh, uh, for one week, for a period of one week before uh, people who become, un some states require a one week waiting period for people who become unemployed Uh, before they start collecting benefits. Under this bill, Washington will pick up the full cost for states that want to provide those benefits immediately instead of waiting one week, okay? So some states require a one-week waiting period for people who have become unemployed before they start, uh, before they start collecting benefits. Under this $2.2 trillion bill, Washington will pick up the full um, cost for states that want to provide those benefits immediately instead of waiting that one week. But ultimately, it is up to the state you live in to decide whether to provide benefits during that first week. OK, so it's up. It's basically up to your governor. It's basically up. I think. Well, it may be state legislature. I'm not sure if the state legislature passes an emergency bill. Other than that, I think it may be up to the governor to determine that. Okay. So we'll see what happens. That's on a state by state basis. However, uh, the federal government will cover the cost if um, the, if, if your state determines that they're going to waive that one week waiting period. Now, what happens if in the past you've lied to claim benefits, okay, well, for whatever reason, okay, I might have lied to claim benefits. What happens to me? If you knowingly misrepresented your situation, you could be cut off from receiving any further pandemic unemployment compensation and face a fine and jail time under the law, okay? If you knowingly misrepresented your situation, you could be cut off from receiving any further pandemic unemployment compensation and face a fine and jail to the law. Um, and that is, so they cite um, Yale University's uh, law school's website. That's 18, that's a federal statute, a federal, um, federal statute uh, 18 USC code 1001 statements or entries uh, generally okay uh, except as otherwise provided in this section whoever 
in any matter within the, within the jurisdiction of the executive, legislative, or judicial branch of the government of the United States knowingly and willfully. One, falsifies, conceals, or covers up by any trick, scheme, or device a material fact. Two, makes materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or representation. Three, or three, or three, makes or uses any false writing or document knowing the same to contain any materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or entry. They shall be fined under this title, imprisoned not more than five years, or if the offense involves international or domestic terrorism, as defined in Section 2331 of a federal uh, statute, imprisoned not more than eight years or both. If the matter relates to an offense under Chapter 109A, Section uh, 109, Section A, 109, Section B, 110, or 117, or Section 1591, then the term of imprisoned, it, then the term of imprisonment imposed under this section shall be not more than eight years. Okay, uh, so check this out. This is from uh, Federal Statute uh, Section 18. Uh, uh, um, U.S. Uh, criminal U.S. Code uh, Section 18, 1001. Okay, statements or entries generally. Statements or entries generally. 18 U.S.C. Um, section 1001. Okay, check out the article from NBCNews.com. Uh, coronavirus unemployment benefits. Who qualifies and how much they get coronavirus unemployment benefits, who qualifies and how much they get. Um, visit irs.gov frequently, irs.gov. They have a coronavirus. So you, actually, you, go, you can go directly to ir, irs.gov forward slash coronavirus, irs.gov forward slash coronavirus. Um, they have information, coronavirus tax relief. They have information about the stimulus checks. Well, they're updated because they very little information is there right now. They'll update it dealing with the stimulus checks, et cetera, okay? So, but once again, see, this is an example, uh, you know, politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. This is an example of, poli of uh, the power of the government to impact the lives of Americans. We see the malfeasance of the government, we see senators and members of the House of Representatives having to come to the aid of, uh, of people to help to relieve the, uh, help to relieve the chaos that the federal government has inflicted upon people. Because the overwhelming majority of this, if not all of this was avoidable. What I mean by that is, not saying coronavirus was avoidable. I'm talking about this becoming a, a pandemic in the U.S. like this. If, if because of things that have happened in the past, because uh, um, so it, it could have been maybe a bad flu season. But during a bad flu season in recent times, you didn't have to have governors calling for non-essential businesses to be shut down. You didn't have stay-at-home orders. You didn't have to have governors calling for a stay-at-home order. The worst you may see is maybe a school district shut down of the flu. That day, I've seen that here and there, okay? We haven't seen probably anything like this with the number of stay-at-home orders by governors, not essential businesses shutting down. We haven't seen anything like this probably since the 1918 uh, pandemic or Spanish flu pandemic. In that one, that was before there was a vaccine for the flu. And a lot of you all have seen my broadcast dealing with that. There were, there were 675,000 people uh, who died in the U.S. because of that, because of that flu. This was, it started during World War I. And it hit in three waves, okay? 
uh, about spring, uh, March or so of 19, then it hit in a wave in fall, going to about September, right around September for three months. And then another wave, the, the, the wave in the second wave in the fall was more deadly and worse than the first wave because the virus mutated. And this virus goes around the world. 500 million people around the world catch it. 50 million people have it. Majority of them in Europe, Asia. And the, the virus, that second wave, the virus mutated. So the second wave was worse than the first wave. And then there was a third wave that hit in early of 1919 as well, okay? So I did an extensive video dealing with the history and what can be learned from that. Also, Donald Trump's grandfather died of the Spanish flu in 1918. All right. So when, when Donald Trump talked about uh, he was surprised to find out how many people died of the flu. Right. Well, your, your grandfather died of the flu in 1918. OK. You, did you forget about that? OK. Uh, let's see here. I want to make sure I got through all this information. So be sure, to, uh, if you like this type of information, also you can donate to the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show, dollar sign, the AHN show, through Cash App, paypal.me forward slash then show through PayPal. Um, also at our, uh, our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, you can donate there as well. African American business business owners, you can um, advertise with the African History Network, email at africanhistorynetwork.com, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, and uh, we'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Uh, current promotion, buy one month, get two months free. We have that going on for a few more days. Uh, we just brought on some new advertisers. Well, in the past couple of weeks or so, we brought on some new advertisers. But we still have um, ad space available. I know a lot of African-American business owners uh, are still operating online, e-commerce businesses. They're trying to find out how to get uh, customers, et cetera. With people being at home right now, you're looking for something to read. Uh, a good book to read would be Black Heroes of Fire. Black Heroes of Fire. This is the history of the first African-American um, fire company in Chicago. The first African-American fire company in Chicago. They were, were known as Engine 21. Engine 21. Black Heroes of Fire introduces and describes the background of the members of Engine 21, Chicago's first organized paid African-American firefighting company. Find out about their heroism. Find out about their exploits. In the book, Black Heroes of Fire by author DeKalb Walcott Jr. DeKalb Walcott Jr. It's available right now at Amazon.com and at the website BlackHeroesOfFire.com. BlackHeroesOfFire.com. Now, with a lot of people being home right now, they want to work out. They want to stay in shape. Want to reduce cortisol levels. Okay. Want to reduce stress. She ran herself fit.com can help you with this. Now she ran herself fit.com is a, uh, a website whose mission is to inspire and motivate women to make healthy lifestyle changes. She ran herself fit is a brand that promotes women living a healthy lifestyle by making small sacrifices in your daily routine and changing your uh, diet. You can combat many of the different diseases that are prevalent in the African-American community. Now, the owner of She Ran Herself Fit, her name is Felicia. Felicia lost over 200 pounds by changing her diet and by running. She Ran Herself Fit um, has apparel at their website that can be purchased that can help you when you're working out as well. Visit their website, sheranherselffit.com, sheranherselffit.com. Uh, Now, a lot of people um, want to get learn more about the stock market, get their finances in order, et cetera. The profitroom.com can help you with this. You may have seen some of my interviews with um, the owners of the profitroom.com. And this, uh, the profitroom.com is a stock market trading and education company, a stock market trading and education company. They uh, have mentorship programs that are designed for beginners. They teach individuals how to create generational wealth through trading and investing in the financial markets. So they teach about stock markets, options, futures, foreign exchange markets, which is Forex. Their specialty is day trading. 
Their specialty is day trading. They also offer one-on-one -on -one mentorship as well. Okay. Visit their website, theprofitroom.com, theprofitroom.com for more information. Let them know you found out about this from the African History Network. During this period of time, a lot of people are looking for um, various products, various soaps, all different types of things like that to purchase, natural toothpaste. Well, sageandelmapothecary.com is the website you want to visit to order these from. Now, they create unique products, especially with you in mind. At sageandelmapothecary.com, they use simple ingredients such as whole fruits, herbs, and vegetables. Each product crafted offers a unique plant-based experience. So they offer over uh, 60 different uh, products. Of, they have beautifully handcrafted soaps, natural toothpaste, hydrating oils, deodorants, face masks, shampoos, conditioners, and much more. Visit their website, sageandelmapothecary.com, A-P-O-T-H-E-C-A-R-Y. You can find out, you can order their products there. You can find out about their pop-up shops and various vending events uh, where they will be throughout the year. Uh, they have a special promotion right now for uh, those listeners of the African History Network and viewers of the African History Network. Use the promo code AHN Spring 20. AHN Spring 20 to get 20% off your order, order at sageandelmapothecary.com. Okay, um, so be sure to watch the African History Network show uh, Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we'll be broadcasting uh, on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. And we're on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation, WFDF. Uh, we're broadcasting also on my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Um, let's see. So I gave you the two articles. And the third article was uh, stimulus checks are coming. Here's how to make sure you get yours quickly. That's from NBCNews.com as well. Stimulus checks are coming. Here's how to make sure you get yours quickly. Okay, so there's a lot of good information. Visit irs.gov forward slash coronavirus for updates. As more information comes out, more updates happen. We'll give you updates on this. We'll talk about this on my Sunday night show as well. You can listen to people have been asking about my audio podcast, okay? Um, most of these shows, we have an audio podcast format. So we're on eight different podcast platforms. Wherever you get your podcast from, uh, just search for the African History Network show. Wherever you get your podcast from, Search for the African History Network show. And then also, um, you can uh, also go to uh, blogtalkradio.com forward slash the African History Network show, blogtalkradio.com forward slash the African History Network show. And you can um, search there. Uh, um, we have the podcast there as well because I upload on Blog Talk Radio and then they're put on uh, eight different podcast platforms. So we're on Castbox, uh, Acast, we're on FM Player, iTunes, um, we're on uh, Stitcher. Okay, we're on eight different podcast platforms. All right, and then when you advertise with the African History Network, also your um, your business will be promoted in those on those eight different podcast platforms where our audio podcasts are. Okay, and uh, also the House of Representatives has passed the uh, $2.2 trillion uh, stimulus bill as well. So that's passed the House. It, uh, so once it's signed into law by uh, Donald Trump, it'll go into law. So we, we still will get updates on how fast the checks will go out, et cetera. And let's see here, let me, uh, let me check this here. Just a, let me check, uh, let me look at some articles here. Okay, House gives final passage to two trillion dollar stimulus bill. We'll look at uh, reporting from Washington Post and also um, NBCNews.com. I have NBC News up right here. House gives final passage to two trillion dollar coronavirus stimulus bill. 
Also, we have uh, ABC News. I monitor about 35 different sources daily. I have um, the news apps on my phone because I, I got the uh, notifications from Smart News uh, also. And we've got um, ABC News uh, as well. ABC News website is abcnews.go.com, abcnews.go.com. So let's look at this here. Uh, so the House of Representatives on Friday, uh, March 27th, uh, passed a $2 trillion coronavirus economic stimulus bill, and Donald Trump is expected to sign it into law quickly. Okay, Donald Trump is expected to sign it into law quickly. Uh, the legislation which, which passed unanimously by the Senate uh, on Wednesday uh, it was actually, well, I think it was actually early Thursday morning, uh, about a little before 2 a.m. Thursday morning. But this uh, bill provides relief for workers and businesses that have been devastated by the outbreak. Um, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said no bill is perfect, but we want to make sure that it, that it at least comes part of the way to being sufficient. Okay. And she said this ahead of the vote. She said, I do think that when we're considering a bill, appreciate it for what it is, appreciate it for what is in the bill, rather than judging it for what is not in the bill. But we do know that we must do more, okay? And as uh, CNN reported a couple of days ago, it's expected that there will be uh, another bill uh, after this, possibly in the next few months or so, it's possible that there'd be another, uh, a fourth uh, coronavirus bill. Now, uh, Donald Trump has applauded the final product, uh, the largest economic relief package in modern U.S. history, and said this week that he would sign the legislation, which the Senate passed uh, 96 to 0 late Wednesday. It was actually early Thursday morning. Um, White House officials were monitoring the vote closely and we're hoping to get the legislation to the White House quickly so that uh, uh, Trump could hold a signing ceremony uh, Friday afternoon, uh, two people familiar with the matter uh, said. The House vote Friday came after uh, Democratic and Republican, came after Democrat, Democratic and Republican leaders late Thursday summoned uh, House members to Washington because they feared the package would not be able to pass by voice vote, causing lawmakers to scramble back to the Capitol from their district. So a lot of them were driving hours from their districts because they were back home. The, the House of Representatives was on a recess because, and they were gonna do a voice vote. But because of Representative Thomas Massey, Republican from Kentucky, who hopefully will be voted out of office next term, by the way, uh, November 3rd, 2020, um, because of him, they had to scramble to get back, okay, uh, to actually vote in person. So House leaders wanted to avoid bringing members back to Washington because of the coronavirus outbreak. So they had planned to hold a voice vote that could be done without lawmakers returning. There was speculation, however, that Representative Thomas Massey, Republican from Kentucky, might demand a roll call vote. Those suspicions proved right. Shortly, beca shortly before the vote, Representative Thomas Massey, Kentucky, uh, Republican from Kentucky, said in a series of tweets that he would try to force a roll call vote on the legislation, arguing that House members should have to go on record. It is too much to ask, he, he said, is it too much to ask that the House do its job just like the Senate did, he tweeted. Now, keep in mind, after the Senate voted, Mitch McConnell sent the Senate on recess. They don't come back to like something like April 10th, something like that. Ultimately, House leaders were able to thwart the request for a recorded vote from Massey, who lacked support for the move from other members, and passed the bill in, in a voice vote. They passed the bill in a voice vote. The maneuver, however, required a quorum of the House to be on the floor angering many members 
who would have preferred not to be in the close contact with their colleagues or with travelers on the way to and from Washington. The bill's passage came after an emotional three-hour debate on the House of Representatives floor in which members of both parties largely voiced support for the measure despite some misgivings. Okay, so uh, check out the uh, reporting also. We'll post this link, uh, NBCnews.com, and we see uh, Washington Post um, has the article also. Um, House gives final passage to $2 trillion coronavirus stimulus bill. Of states, uh, as you have Republican governors in states, and Republican have not taken action yet to have stay-ins and shutdowns and things like this, as they take action, as their hospitals become overrun with uh, people who have to be put in units, and as they try to flatten the curve, you're going to see more people in, in other states file for unemployment insurance. Okay? So, you, so you're gonna have to have another bill and more, and, and more is, is coming, uh, more yet to come, okay? We haven't, we haven't seen the worst of this yet. We haven't seen the worst of this yet. So stay safe. Uh, stay at home as much as possible. Um, stay, a lot of people talking about getting a quarantine boo, things like that. All right. You probably have a lot of babies born nine months from now and then Corona or Rona. Um, you know, so <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, hope, hopefully if babies come from this, hopefully people get married also. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> hopefully there'll be a lot of marriages nine months from now. If their baby's born, hopefully there'll be a lot of marriages nine months from now. All right. So um, follow us on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, my problem hotel. Um, listen to the African History Network show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We broadcast on our social media platforms and we're on the, uh, the radio station, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. If you go to our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, we have the link there, how to listen to the show live uh, through the radio. And you can also watch us live here. Uh, you can donate to the African History Network. You can support us. We definitely need your support. Uh, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, or paypal.me forward slash the AHN show um, through PayPal. Okay, so if you want to donate five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen, twenty five, or hundred, whatever it is, that definitely helps us um, keep doing what we do, keep um, doing the research, uh, broadcasting the show, uh, helps uh, cover expenses, helps finance our Sunday night show, also. Okay. All right, look, we have to get out of here. Remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct wrong behavior, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So we control the radius of a man's thoughts. You could, you control the compass of his actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Um, remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. <laughs>